Hello. In this lecture, I'm going to introduce Turing machine. Turing machine was proposed by Alan Turing in the year 1936. Alan Turing, a British mathematician, a genius of the century, proposed this computing device which was entirely abstract, far before the real computer came into being. Turing machine corresponds to type 0 grammar as of this time we all know the different grammars available under the hood and different grammars which were categorized by Chomsky. Type 0 grammar is the most general grammar. It's actually for the unrestricted language. So Turing machine is the format of unrestricted language and therefore it can accept all types of language. That means language that is generated by type 1, type 2, type 3 and obviously by type 0. Turing machine can be realized as an input output device or as an acceptor device. When we are considering Turing machine as an input output device, obviously we can get some output corresponding to some input. And when we are considering Turing machine as an acceptor device, it can accept a string corresponding or uh, belonging to some language. This is the famous statement that is popularly known as charge Turing statement states that what could normally be called as an effective procedure obviously can be realized by a Turing machine. That means if it's an effective procedure, that means it is having step-by-step -step logics that takes you to some desired goal, then obviously it can be realized using a Turing machine. So we can build a Turing machine for this particular procedure. Now, if not, then the problem is not solvable. That means for every solvable problem, if we can write a procedure for the, that particular solvable problem, we can build a Turing machine as well. If the Turing machine cannot be built for that particular problem, then the problem is not solvable. So we cannot construct a Turing machine for a problem, then the problem is unsolvable. unsolvable. It's not an algorithm unless and until we can construct a Turing machine for this. A Turing machine consists of an infinite tip, which is infinite in either direction. Now, when we will be considering Turing machine as I.O. device, then we will be considering this tape as infinite in both the direction. Now, when we consider the Turing machine as accepting device, we will consider this tape uh, infinite in one direction. Now, we can prove that. It can be proved that infinite tape in either direction is equivalent with infinite tape in one direction, whatever it means. So, a Turing machine is consi consisting of an infinite tape that contains the tape symbols which are initially the inputs for the Turing machine. The cells contains some input symbol. Here you can see that it's from A1 through A7. These are the input symbols. The B corresponds to blank cells. And there is a finite control that goes on reading these input symbols and this finite control, the head of this finite control can move in either direction to the right or to the left. Uh, and obviously it can change the cell, the content of the cell. So the Turing machine can write something into the cell by reading the content from the cell. It can transit to some different state in the finite control. So if the initial state is say Q0, and the tape symbol is A1 and the head reads A1, then the Turing machine can transit to some other state, say Q1, and can write something in place of A1. So it can write X1 and can move to right or to left. So the fact is that it can move to right or it can move to left in this direction. So B I use typically in order to represent the blank cells. That means the cells contains nothing. So let us consider this with some details. Let us try to understand the transition of a Turing machine. Say these are the tape symbols from A to A1 to AM initially in the cells of this Turing machine, and Q0 is the initial state. That is the head of the uh, finite control is on A1 that means it is supposed to read A1 on a start so the initial state is Q0 it's not obvious that always um, the initial state is going to read the first symbol of the tape if we are considering the Turing machine as input output device it can be anywhere 
the head can be placed anywhere uh, on the input symbols. So when we are considering the Turing machine as the accepted device, then obviously the head has to be placed on the first symbol of the of that of the tape. That means the initial initial state should read the first symbol always in case of accepted device. So let's understand the transition. So Q0 on reading this A1 can move to right or can move to left. Now we are considering in this case it's going to move towards right and it will change it can change the cell content. So it is changing the cell content from A1 to X1 and it is moving towards right and changing its state from Q0 to Q1. So this transition rule can be therefore written as delta Q0 A1 and it goes to Q1 it is changing the cell content to X1 and moving right. So this is the transition rule and this is the style of writing the transition rule in typical format. That means any, it was at state Q0 on getting the symbol A1, on reading the symbol A1 in the cell, it is going to state Q1 and it is writing the content of the cell X1 and moving towards the right. So now if it goes from Q1 to Q2, say on reading A2 in state Q1, it goes to Q2 and moves towards right, then obviously we will write the delta rule in this way. It's Q1 and it's getting the symbol A2. So it moves to Q2 and say it is rewriting the cell content to X2 and moving right. So obviously we will be doing this in this way. So it goes towards right, it changes the A2 to X2. So obviously the cell content gets changed to X2 and it moves towards right here with the state Q2. Now it may not change the cell content as well. Say the next rule is something like that. Say it's on Q2 and it is getting a symbol A3. It moves towards right to say Q2. That means it remains in the same state and it does not change the content of the cell at all, just at all, just moves towards right. So if in Q2 it gets the symbol A3, it remains in Q2, it writes A3 into the cell, that means the cell content remains same and it moves towards right. So what happens, it goes towards right in this way, the cell content remains same and it goes here with the same state Q2. It may change to some different state as well. Now, so the next rule is something like that. It's in Q2, it is getting A4, it goes to say Q1 and it is changing the symbol to Y2 and moving left. That means now what it does, it changes this symbol A4 to Y2 and obviously it is moving towards its left, it comes here and it goes to state Q1 and this is the case. So obviously we can now understand how the transition rules can be written and how the head can be moved towards right and left and how the depth symbol could be changed. So in the next video, I'm going to formally define the Turing machine.